Hello, in this video, we're going to find the limit as x approaches negative infinity of e to the x times the sine of x. So first, let's figure out what we think the limit should be, and then we're going to prove our answer. So if you think about the graph of e to the x, and thinking about the graph is usually a good way to do problems in math. If you can think about the graph, oftentimes you can figure out the answer, or at least what you think the answer should be. The graph of e to the x looks like this. And so you see that as x approaches negative infinity, so as your x's get smaller and smaller going this way, the y value, which is e to the x, gets closer and closer to zero. So as x approaches negative infinity, e to the x will approach zero. On the other hand, the graph of the sine function looks a little bit different. So sine of zero is zero, and then it just oscillates like this forever, right? It just does this forever, keeps going on and on and on forever. It has a maximum of one and a minimum of negative one. So the sine function is always between the values one and negative one. Uh, so sine is bounded, right? It's bounded below by negative one, and it's bounded above by one. So we're going to use this information to find the limit. So if this is approaching zero and this is oscillating between negative one and one, eventually what's going to happen is you have something that's getting smaller and smaller and smaller being multiplied by something that's just bouncing back and forth between these two numbers. So this product itself is approaching zero and this limit should be equal to zero. The question is, how do we prove it? We can use something called the squeeze theorem. So the squeeze theorem, um, to use it, what we do is we start by writing down our limit or our function that's in our limit, which is this. And we have to create an inequality. We have to squeeze it between two other functions. So we know that the sine of x is less than or equal to one. So this is less than or equal to e to the x times one. But you don't have to write the one because uh, e to the x times one is e to the x. I'm just gonna erase it. Likewise, it's greater than or equal to negative one. So it's greater than or equal to e to the x times negative one. But again, you don't have to write the negative one because when you multiply these, you just get negative e to the x. I'm just gonna write negative e to the x like that, right? Because sine is between these. If that's confusing, you can think about it another way. Watch this. Maybe that's a little bit too much right now. So watch this. Sine x is less than or equal to one and it's greater than or equal to negative one. And then you can say, okay, what's missing here to get the function in our limit? Well, we're missing the e to the x. So you multiply each side of this, each piece of this inequality by e to the x. So you get negative e to the x, and then e to the x times sine x, and then e to the x times one is e to the x. So this is a, a, an approach that most people understand better than just doing it. Eventually you just, you just jump to this piece, but if you don't like that, you can always start with this inequality and say, hey, what's missing here? Well, go back up here, you're missing an e to the x. But what you, what you do to one part of the inequality, you have to do to all parts of the inequality. So now we just have to write some things down. So note that if we take the limit as x approaches infinity of negative e to the x, we know it's going to be zero because we talked about the limit of e to the x approaching zero uh, when x approaches negative infinity. Um, so having the negative here is not going to affect anything. Um, this will still approach zero. Likewise, the limit as x approaches negative infinity of e to the x is also zero. So basically we're saying that as x approaches negative infinity, this is approaching zero. As x approaches negative infinity, this is approaching zero. Because this is trapped between, it's squeezed between these two other functions, then as x approaches negative infinity, we also have that this approaches zero. And this is, this is by something called the squeeze theorem, which is essentially what we did. We squeezed our function uh, between two other functions that are approaching a limit, in this case, zero. So this is zero by the squeeze theorem. theorem. Yeah, nice problem. Uh, it's a nice problem because uh, it forces you to think about the graphs of e to the x and sine x, which are very common popular graphs in mathematics. So if you know what the graphs look like, you can get some intuition as to what you think the answer should be. 
then once you have that intuition, um, you can apply the squeeze theorem to show that the limit is what your intuition says it should be. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.